the people's expression of will took an unexpected format and began long before the elections. An attempt on the FIC literally exposed a social wound, revealing one of the key problems of the region. The tremendous fragmentation along political, national and cultural factors has reached its ultimate peak. Left and right are on the verge of a heated confrontation. Attacks on opponents have become a common and frequent occurrence. The day prior, four unidentified individuals assaulted Matthias Ecker, a candidate representing the Social Democratic Party of Germany. The politician was transported to the hospital and underwent surgery. Simultaneously, a group of individuals assaulted a member of the Green Party in Saxony who was erecting pre-election posters. Additionally, a senator from Berlin was subjected to an attack. We were deeply absorbed in conversation when all of a sudden, without any prior indication, an assault took place from the rear. I was struck on the back of my head by a bag that held a solid item. Subsequently, the man promptly departed. Certainly, there was initially a sense of shock, but I can assure you that I am currently in a good state. Such displays of aggression from voters are backed by statements from politicians themselves. Left and right actively use hate rhetoric towards opponents. The responsibility for all problems, from the migration crisis to economic stagnation, is constantly shifting back and forth, with no clear resolution in sight. These European elections are also targeted against the right, against right-wing populists who desire to destroy unity, against those who believe that the future can be achieved by returning to the past, against those who want to incite division among people. That's why I assert we must enhance the Democrats. The attempt on the Prime Minister of Slovakia is already being called the black swan of the electoral campaign in the European Parliament. Analysts had already observed a substantial rise in support for the right wing, and the incident could potentially expedite their process of consolidation. They were predicted to increase their faction in the next composition of the European Parliament. However, today some experts predict that the right may take the lead and fundamentally change the external and internal policies of the European Union. Some politicians are very clear about this and suggest that Eurocrats pack their bags. Brussels has transformed into a swamp where unelected bureaucrats are planning to utilize their vision of a European federal superstate. We must stop this. That is the reason why our election promise for today is that we will commence by firing a total of 10,000 bureaucrats in Brussels. I would like to begin with you, Ursula von der Leyen. Your leadership in the Commission was a complete catastrophe. Millions of illegal migrants entered our continent before your very eyes. Before your very eyes, you found yourself at the center of the Pfizer scandal being investigated by the European prosecutor. And not a solitary European voted for you, neither when you took office for the first time, nor during this current period. This is unworthy of the principles of European democracy. The ongoing processes are being anxiously observed not only by the citizens of the European Union. A nervous twitch crept up on every fleeting passerby. Their funding literally hung in the air. The bench, of course, will not be closed, but the size of the bowl may change significantly. This inevitably leads to competition and intraspecific struggle. First and foremost, this is a war for money. Who among these individuals is very different? The individual who came close to ruining the theater, this tiny cook, then the imposter, and so on, continuing with a similar pattern. These groups are so dirty with each other, it's just a pleasure to watch. Secondly, they are planning, you know, to conduct elections online. Can you imagine voting online? This is the place where 100% of Earth's population cast their votes. Wait, this is the individual who coordinated the elections, their online voting, and they are highly probable to emerge as the victors. But everyone else comprehends this. They comprehend that the individual who abruptly raised this subject will be the one to endure all these grants. The most amusing thing is that the pointless fuss about attempting to establish any appearance of legitimacy crumbles against the straightforward lack of trust in the process from the disadvantaged brothers and sisters. Everyone who has been eating cutlets with gravy since 2020 is convinced that they will be deceived once again, and the flow of grants will remain under the control of constantly growing individuals. I do not have knowledge of how the election process will unfold. However, I can confidently state that if, God forbid, there is even the slightest suspicion that the elections were falsified, I firmly believe that we will undoubtedly obtain information about it. Modern technologies aid in the discovery process, in addition to the new information age, and everything that was previously concealed becomes apparent. Yes, there are tools, so these citizens won't get away with it, because they will face criminal liability in the territory of the country they are in. If there is an article pertaining to election fraud, then they will simply be confined in prison. What will be decided by this pompous idiot is not who will sit in prison, of course. The right turn of the European Union may end extremely unexpectedly for all those who will be declared an irrational item in the budget. About the wave of global changes, 
Andre Saichev in the screenshot section.